Jain philosophy is one of the Indian philosophy that separates body matter from the soul consciousness completely. Jain philosophy deals with reality, cosmology, epistemology study of knowledge, and vitalism. Jain philosophy attempts to explain the rationale of being and existence, the nature of the universe and its constituents, the nature of bondage and the means to achieve liberation. The three foundation blocks are Ahimsa non, violence Aparigraha detachment form materialist possessions Anakantavada, multiple perspectives of truth. Jain texts expound that in every half cycle of time, 24 Tirthankaras grace this part of the universe to teach the unchanging doctrine of right faith, right knowledge, and right conduct. Jain philosophy means the teachings of a Tirthankara which are recorded in sacred Jain texts. The distinguishing features of Jain philosophy are belief on independent existence of soul and matter. Refutation of the idea that a supreme divine creator, owner, preserver or destroyer of the universe exists. Potency of karma, eternal universe. Accent on relativity and multiple facets of truth and Morality and ethics based on liberation of soul. Jainism strongly upholds the individualistic nature of soul and personal responsibility for one's decisions, and that self-reliance and individual efforts alone are responsible for one's liberation. Topic. Ahimsa According to the Jain texts, the vitalities or life principles are ten, namely the five senses, energy, respiration, life duration, the organ of speech, and the mind. The table below summaries the vitalities, living beings possess in accordance to their senses. In the animal world, the five sensed beings without mind have nine life principles with the addition of the sense of hearing. Those endowed with mind have ten with the addition of the mind. According to Tattvarthasutra, a major Jain text, "...the severance of vitalities out of passion is injury." According to the Purushartha Siddhupaya, "...non-manifestation of passions like attachment is non-injury and manifestation of such passions is injury This is termed as the essence of the Jaina scriptures. Vegetarianism and other non-violent practices and rituals of Jains flow from the principle of ahimsa. Fundamentals Jain philosophy postulates that seven tattva truths or fundamental principles constitute reality. These are Jiva the soul substance which is said to have a separate existence from the body that houses it. Jiva is characterized by satana consciousness and upayoga knowledge and perception. Though the soul experiences both birth and death, it is neither really destroyed nor created. Decay and origin refer respectively to the disappearing of one state of soul and appearance of another state, these being merely the modes of the soul substance. A jiva the non-soul Asrava influx inflow of auspicious and evil karmic matter into the soul Banda bondage, mutual intermingling of the soul and karmas. Samvara stoppage, obstruction of the inflow of karmic matter into the soul. Nirjara gradual dissociation, separation or falling off of part of karmic matter from the soul. Moksha liberation, complete annihilation of all karmic matter bound with any particular soul. The knowledge of these rayals is said to be essential for the liberation of the soul. Topic. The path to liberation According to the Jain philosophy, the world samsara is full of himsa violence. Therefore, one should direct all his efforts in attainment of moksha. According to the Jain text, Tattvartha Sutra, right faith, right knowledge, and right conduct together constitute the path to liberation. Right faith means belief in substances like soul and non-soul without delusion and misapprehension. Right knowledge when the nature of reality substances is ascertained with the help of the doctrine of manifold points of view the knowledge thus obtained free from doubts, misapprehension, and delusion is said to be the right knowledge. Right conduct the very nature of the soul, devoid of all passions, untainted, unattached to any alien substance is right conduct. It is achieved by abjuring all sinful activities of the body, the speech, and the mind. Gunasthana 
Jain text mention about the following stages of spiritual development. Those who pass the last stage are called Siddha and become fully established in right faith, right knowledge and right conduct. Substances According to Jainas, the world is composed of two different kinds of substances, the jiva and the ajiva These are the uncreated existing constituents of the universe which impart the necessary dynamics to the universe by interacting with each other. These constituents behave according to the natural laws and their nature without interference from external entities. Dharma or true religion according to Jainism is Vathu Sahavo Dhammo translated as, "...the intrinsic nature of a substance is its true dharma". <laughs> unconscious substance The five unconscious substances are Pudula, it is non-living no soul matter which is classified as solid liquid gaseous energy fine karmic materials and extra fine matter or ultimate particles paramanu or ultimate particles are the basic building block of matter it possesses at all times four qualities namely a color varna a taste rasa a smell ganda and a certain kind of palpability sparsha touch one of the qualities of the paramanu and pudula is that of permanence and indestructibility it combines and changes its modes but its basic qualities remain the same. According to Jainism, it cannot be created nor destroyed. Dharma medium of motion and Adharma medium of rest also known as Dharmastakaya and Adharmastakaya, they are unique to Jain thought depicting the principles of motion and rest. They are said to pervade the entire universe. Dharma and Adharma are by themselves not motion or rest but mediate motion and rest in other bodies. Without dharmastakaya motion is not possible and without a dharmastakaya rest is not possible in the universe. Akasa, space, space is a substance that accommodates souls, matter, the principle of motion, the principle of rest, and time. It is all-pervading, infinite and made of infinite space points. According to Jains, space is a substance, in the nature of a vacuum but not a pure vacuum. It is an extended continuous vacuum. As pure vacuum it will be non-existent, and non-extended, which will devoid it of even one positive quality. Therefore, Jains propound that space, which is endowed with infinite extension is a substance in itself. Kala time in Jainism, time is explained in two different aspects. Firstly as the measure of duration, known in the form of hours, days, and the like. Secondly, as the cause of the continuity of function of things. According to Shampit Rai Jain, nothing in nature can exist destitute or devoid of function. Function is discharged by the displacement of energy in the case of simple units and things. If there were no time substance to help in the performance of the movement of the displacement of energy, things would be doomed to remain in the same condition always. Quote, in its first aspect, time is likened to a wheel with twelve spokes divided into descending and ascending halves with six stages, each of immense duration estimated at billions of sagarapama ocean years. Topic. Conscious substance According to the Jain philosophy, there are infinite independent souls. These are categorized into two. Liberated and non-liberated. Infinite knowledge, perception and bliss are the intrinsic qualities of a soul. These qualities are fully enjoyed unhindered by liberated souls, but obscured by karma in the case of non-liberated souls resulting in karmic bondage. This bondage further results in a continuous cohabitation of the soul with the body. Thus, an embodied non-liberated soul is found in four realms of existence heavens, hells, humans and animal world, in a never-ending cycle of births and deaths also known as samsara. The soul is in bondage since beginningless time, however, it is possible to achieve liberation through rational perception, rational knowledge and rational conduct. Harry Oldmeadow notes that Jain ontology is both realist and dualist metaphysics. <laughs> karma In Jainism, karma is the basic principle within an overarching psychocosmology. It not only encompasses the causality of transmigration, but is also conceived of as an extremely subtle matter, which infiltrates the soul, obscuring its natural, transparent and pure qualities. Karma is thought of as a kind of pollution, that taints the soul with various colors 
Based on its karma, a soul undergoes transmigration and reincarnates in various states of existence like heavens or hells, or as humans or animals. Jains cite inequalities, sufferings, and pain as evidence for the existence of karma. Jain texts have classified the various types of karma according to their effects on the potency of the soul. The Jain theory seeks to explain the karmic process by specifying the various causes of karmic influx asrava and bondage banda, placing equal emphasis on deeds themselves, and the intentions behind those deeds. The Jain karmic theory attaches great responsibility to individual actions, and eliminates reliance on supposed existence of divine grace or retribution. The Jain doctrine also holds that it is possible for us to both modify our karma, and to obtain release from it, through the austerities and purity of conduct. Cosmology Jain cosmology denies the existence of a supreme being responsible for creation and operation of universe. According to Jainism, this loka or universe is an uncreated entity, existing since infinity, immutable in nature, beginningless and endless. Jain texts describe the shape of the universe as similar to a man standing with legs apart and arm resting on his waist. The universe according to Jainism is narrow at top and broad at middle and once again becomes narrow at the bottom. Mahapurana of Akarya Jinasena is famous for his quote, Some foolish men declare that the Creator made the world. The doctrine that the world was created is ill-advised and should be rejected. If God created the world, where was he before the creation? If you say he was transcendent then and needed no support, where is he now? How could God have made this world without any raw material? If you say that he made this first, and then the world, you are faced with an endless regression. Kalchakra According to Jainism, time is beginningless and eternal. The Kalachakra, the cosmic wheel of time, rotates ceaselessly. The wheel of time is divided into two half rotations, Utsarpini or ascending time cycle and Avasarpini, the descending time cycle, occurring continuously after each other. Utsarpini is a period of progressive prosperity and happiness, while Avsarpini is a period of increasing sorrow and immorality. Each of this half-time cycle consisting of innumerable period of time measured in Sagarapama and Palyapama years is further sub-divided into six aras or epochs of unequal periods. Currently, the time cycle is in a Vasarpini or descending phase with the following epochs. The aras defined in Jain texts are Sasama 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 Dasama Dasama Sasama Dasama Dasama Dasamain Utsarpini The order of the Aras is reversed. Starting from Dasama Dasama, it ends with Sasama Sasama and thus this never-ending cycle continues. Each of these Aras progress into the next phase seamlessly without apocalyptic consequences. The increase or decrease in the happiness, life spans and length of people and general moral conduct of the society changes in a phased and graded manner as the time passes. No divine or supernatural beings are credited or responsible with these spontaneous temporal changes, either in a creative or overseeing role, rather human beings and creatures are born under the impulse of their own karma. <laughs> Loka The early Jains contemplated the nature of the earth and universe and developed a detailed hypothesis on the various aspects of astronomy and cosmology. According to the Jain texts, the universe is divided into three parts Urdva Loka, the realms of the gods or heavens Madhya Loka, the realms of the humans, animals and plants Ado Loka, the realms of the hellish beings or the infernal regions. The lower world consists of seven hells which is inhabited by Bhavanpati demigods and the hellish beings. Hellish beings reside in hells whose names are Ratna Prabha Dharma, Sharkara Prabha Vansha, Valuka Prabha Mega, Pank Prabha Anjana, Doom Prabha Arista, Tama Prabha Magavi, Mahatama Prabha Madhavi. <laughs> Salakapurusas During the each motion of the half cycle of the Wheel of Time, 63 Salakapurusa or 63 illustrious men, consisting of the 24 Tirthankaras and their contemporaries regularly appear. The Jain universal or legendary history is basically a compilation of the deeds of these illustrious men. 
They are 24 Tirthankara, 12 Chakravarti, 9 Baladevas, 9 Vasudevas and 9 Prativasudevas. Besides these there are 9 Narada, 11 Rudras, 24 Kamdeva, 24 Fathers of the Tirthankaras, 24 Mothers of the Tirthankaras and 14 Patriarchs Kulakara who are also important figures in Jain universal history. Epistemology <inaudible> 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 Jainism made its own unique contribution to this mainstream development of philosophy by occupying itself with the basic epistemological issues, namely, with those concerning the nature of knowledge, how knowledge is derived, and in what way knowledge can be said to be reliable. Knowledge for the Jains takes place in the soul, which, without the limiting factor of karma, is omniscient. Humans have partial knowledge, the object of knowledge is known partially and the means of knowledge do not operate to their full capacity. According to Tattvartha Sutra, the knowledge of the basic Jaina truths can be obtained through Pramana – means or instruments of knowledge which can yield a comprehensive knowledge of an object, and Naya – particular standpoints, yielding partial knowledge. Pramana are of five kinds, Mati or sensory knowledge, Sruta or scriptural knowledge, Avadi or clairvoyance, Manaparyaya or telepathy, and Kavala or omniscience. The first two are described as being indirect means of knowledge, paraksa, with the others furnishing direct knowledge, prachaksa, by which it is meant that the object is known directly by the soul. Jains came out with their doctrines of relativity used for logic and reasoning. Anakantavada, the theory of relative pluralism or manifoldness. Syadvada, the theory of conditioned predication and Nayavada, the theory of partial standpoints, these philosophical concepts have made most important contributions to the ancient Indian philosophy, especially in the areas of skepticism and relativity. <laughs> Anakantavada One of the most important and fundamental doctrines of Jainism is Anakantavada. It refers to the principles of pluralism and multiplicity of viewpoints, the notion that truth and reality are perceived differently from diverse points of view, and that no single point of view is the complete truth. Jains contrast all attempts to proclaim absolute truth with andagajanyaya, which can be illustrated through the parable of the blind men and an elephant. In this story, each blind man felt a different part of an elephant trunk, leg, ear, etc. All the men claimed to understand and explain the true appearance of the elephant, but could only partly succeed, due to their limited perspectives. This principle is more formally stated by observing that objects are infinite in their qualities and modes of existence, so they cannot be completely grasped in all aspects and manifestations by finite human perception. According to the Jains, only the kivalas omniscient beings, can comprehend objects in all aspects and manifestations, others are only capable of partial knowledge. According to the doctrine, no single, specific, human view can claim to represent absolute truth. Anakantavada encourages its adherents to consider the views and beliefs of their rivals and opposing parties. Proponents of Anakantavada apply this principle to religion and philosophy, reminding themselves that any religion or philosophy even Jainism which clings too dogmatically to its own tenets is committing an error based on its limited point of view. The principle of Anakantavada also influenced Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi to adopt principles of religious tolerance, ahimsa and satyagraha. Syadvada Syadvada is the theory of conditioned predication, which provides an expression to Anakanta by recommending that the epithet Syad be prefixed to every phrase or expression. Syadvada is not only an extension of Anakanta ontology, but a separate system of logic capable of standing on its own. The Sanskrit etymological root of the term Syad is, perhaps, or maybe, but in the context of Syadvada, it means, in some ways, or from a perspective. As reality is complex, no single proposition can express the nature of reality fully. Thus the term, Syad should be prefixed before each proposition giving it a conditional point of view and thus removing any dogmatism in the statement. Since it ensures that each statement is expressed from seven different conditional and relative viewpoints or propositions, Syadvada is known as Saptabhanginaya or the theory of seven conditioned predications. These seven propositions, also known as Saptabhangi, are 
Syed Asti in some ways, it is Syed Nasti in some ways, it is not Syed Asti Nasti in some ways, it is, and it is not Syed Asti Avaktavya in some ways, it is, and it is indescribable Syed Nasti Avaktavya in some ways, it is not, and it is indescribable Syed Asti Nasti Avaktavya in some ways, it is, it is not, and it is indescribable. Syad avaktavya. In some ways, it is indescribable. Each of these seven propositions examines the complex and multifaceted nature of reality from a relative point of view of time, space, substance, and mode. To ignore the complexity of reality is to commit the fallacy of dogmatism. Topic: <laughs> Nayavada. Nayavada is the theory of partial standpoints or viewpoints. Nayavada is a compound of two Sanskrit words, naya, partial viewpoint, and vada, school of thought or debate. It is used to arrive at a certain inference from a point of view. An object has infinite aspects to it, but when we describe an object in practice, we speak of only relevant aspects and ignore irrelevant ones. This does not deny the other attributes, qualities, modes and other aspects, they are just irrelevant from a particular perspective. As a type of critical philosophy, Nayavada holds that all philosophical disputes arise out of confusion of standpoints, and the standpoints we adopt are, although we may not realize it, the outcome of purposes that we may pursue. While operating within the limits of language and seeing the complex nature of reality, Mahavira used the language of Nayas. Naya, being a partial expression of truth, enables us to comprehend reality part by part. Ethics The Jain morality and ethics are rooted in its metaphysics and its utility towards the soteriological objective of liberation. Jaina ethics evolved out of the rules for the ascetics which are encapsulated in the Mahavratas or the Five Great Vows. These ethics are governed not only through the instrumentality of physical actions, but also through verbal action and thoughts. Thus, ahimsa has to be observed through mind, speech, and body. The other rules of the ascetics and laity are derived from these five major vows. Jainism does not invoke fear of or reverence for God or conformity to the divine character as a reason for moral behavior, and observance of the moral code is not necessary simply because it is God's will. Neither is its observance necessary simply because it is altruistic or humanistic, conducive to general welfare of the state or the community. Rather it is an egoistic imperative aimed at self-liberation. While it is true that in Jainism, the moral and religious injunctions were laid down as law by arahants who have achieved perfection through their supreme moral efforts, their adherence is just not to please a god, but because the life of the arahants has demonstrated that such commandments were conducive to the arahants' own welfare, helping them to reach spiritual victory. Just as the arahants achieved moksha or liberation by observing the moral code, so can anyone, who follows this path. Topic. Science and mathematics Topic. Atomism The most elaborate and well-preserved Indian theory of atomism comes from the philosophy of the Jaina school, dating back to at least the 6th century BC. Some of the Jain texts that refer to matter and atoms are Pankastikayasara, Kalpasutra, Tattvarthasutra and Panavana Suttam. The Jains envisioned the world as consisting wholly of atoms, except for souls. Paramanas or atoms were the basic building blocks of matter. Their concept of atoms was very similar to classical atomism, differing primarily in the specific properties of atoms. Each atom, according to Jain philosophy, has one kind of taste, one smell, one color, and two kinds of touch, though it is unclear what was meant by kind of touch. Atoms can exist in one of two states, subtle, in which case they can fit in infinitesimally small spaces, and gross, in which case they have extension and occupy a finite space. Certain characteristics of paramanu correspond with that of subatomic particles. For example, paramanu is characterized by continuous motion either in a straight line or in case of attractions from other paramanus, it follows a curved path. This corresponds with the description of orbit of electrons across the nucleus. Ultimate particles are also described as particles with positive snigda i.e. smooth charge and negative ruxa, rough charges that provide them the binding force. 
Although atoms are made of the same basic substance, they can combine based on their eternal properties to produce any of six aggregates, which seem to correspond with the Greek concept of elements earth, water, shadow, sense objects, karmic matter, and unfit matter. To the Jains, karma was real, but was a naturalistic, mechanistic phenomenon caused by buildups of subtle karmic matter within the soul. They also had detailed theories of how atoms could combine, react, vibrate, move, and perform other actions, which were thoroughly deterministic. Topic. Contributions to Indian philosophy Jainism had a major influence in developing a system of philosophy and ethics that had a major impact on Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. The scholarly research and evidences have shown that philosophical concepts that are typically Indian, karma, ahimsa, moksha, reincarnation and like, either have their origins in the Sramana traditions or were propagated and developed by Jain teachers. The Shramanic ideal of mendicancy and renunciation, that the worldly life was full of suffering and that emancipation required giving up of desires and withdrawal into a lonely and contemplative life, was in stark contrast with the Brahmanical ideal of an active and ritually punctuated life based on sacrifices, household duties and chants to deities. Sramanas developed and laid emphasis on ahimsa, karma, moksha and renunciation. Schools and traditions Jain philosophy arose from the Sramana traditions. In its 2,500 years post-Mahavira history, it remained fundamentally the same as preached by Mahavira, who preached essentially the same religion as the previous Tirthankara. Harry Oldmeadow notes that the Jain philosophy remained fairly standard throughout history and the later elaborations only sought to further elucidate pre-existing doctrine and avoided changing the ontological status of the components. The schisms into Svetambara and Digambara traditions arose mainly on account of differences in question of practice of nudity amongst monks and liberation of women. Apart from these minor differences in practices, there are no major philosophical differences between the different sects of Jainism. The Tattvartha Sutra, which encapsulates major philosophical doctrines, is accepted by all traditions of Jainism. This coherence in philosophical doctrine and consistency across different schools has led scholars like Jaini to remark that in the course of history of Jainism no heretical movements like Mahayana, Tantric or Bhakti movement developed outside mainstream Jainism. Thus, there are traditions within Jainism, but basically the same philosophy that is at the core of Jainism. Topic. Earlier traditions As per the tradition, Jain Sang was divided into two major sects. Digambaras, the older sect hold that nudity is necessary for liberation and only men can attain the final stage of non-attachment to the body by remaining nude. They also hold that the canonical literature was eventually lost. Svetambaras believe that women can attain liberation and that nudity is optional. Svetambara scriptures support both aselakitva, nudity in monks and sasalakitva, the wearing of white clothes by ascetics. They also hold that the Jain canon was not lost. The now defunct Yapaniya sect followed the Digambara practice of nudity and eating from the hands while standing up along with Svetambara beliefs and texts. They notably also permitted their ascetics to be half-clothed in public areas only. The Yapaniya sect was absorbed into the Digambara community during the medieval period. Topic. Medieval traditions The period of 16th to 18th century was a period of reforms in Jainism. The following schools arose during this period. Stanakazi, the Stanakvasis, arising from the Svetambara tradition, rejected idol worship as unsanctioned by scriptures. Terapanthi Digambara. The Digambara Terapantha movement arose in protest against the institution of Bhadarakas Jain priestly class, usage of flowers and offerings in Jain temples, and worship of minor gods. Terapanthi Svetambara. The Terapanthi, also a non-iconic sect, arose from Stanakvasis on account of differences in religious practices and beliefs. Topic. Recent developments Recent events lead to dissatisfaction with the monastic tradition and its related emphasis on austerities saw the arising of two new sects within Jainism in the 20th century. 
These were essentially led by the laity rather than ascetics and soon became a major force to be reckoned with. The non-sectarian cult of Srimad Rachandra, who was one of the major influences on Mahatma Gandhi, is now one of the most popular movements. Another cult founded by Kanjisvami, laying stress on theological determinism and knowledge of self, has gained a large following as well. <laughs> Jain philosophers Jains hold the Jain doctrine to be eternal and based on universal principles. In the current time cycle, they trace the origins of its philosophy to Rishabhanatha, the first Tirthankara. However, the tradition holds that the ancient Jain texts and purvas which documented the Jain doctrine were lost and hence, historically, the Jain philosophy can be traced from Mahavira's teachings. Post Mahavira many intellectual giants amongst the Jain ascetics contributed and gave a concrete form to the Jain philosophy within the parameters set by Mahavira. Following is the partial list of Jain philosophers and their contributions. Kundakunda, first, second century CE, exponent of Jain metaphysics and Jain nayas dealing with the nature of the soul and its contamination by matter, author of Pankastikayasara, essence of the five existence, the Pravakanasara, essence of the scripture, the Samayasara, essence of the doctrine, Niyamasara, essence of discipline, Athapahuta, eight gifts. Dasabhati, ten worships, and Barasa Anaveka, twelve contemplations. Samantabhadra, second century CE, first Jain writer to write on Naya, a PTA Mimamsa, which has had the largest number of commentaries written on it by later Jain logicians. He also composed the Ratnakaranda Sravakakara and the Svayambhu Stotra. Yumasvati or Yumasvami, second century CE, author of first Jain work in Sanskrit, Tattvartha Sutra, expounding philosophy in a most systematized form acceptable to all sects of Jainism. Siddhasena Devakara, fifth century, Jain logician and author of important works in Sanskrit and Prakrit, such as Nyayavatara on logic and Sanmati Sutra, dealing with the seven Jaina standpoints, knowledge and the objects of knowledge. Akalanka, 5th century, key Jain logician, whose works such as Lagiyastraya, Pramanasangraha, Nyavaniskaya Vivarana, Siddhivaniskaya Vivarana, Astasati, Tattvartharajavartaka, et al., are seen as landmarks in Indian logic. The impact of Akalanka may be surmised by the fact that Jain Naya is also known as Akalanka Naya. Pujyapada, 6th century, Jain philosopher, grammarian, Sanskritist. Composed Samadhi Tantra, Ishtopadesha, and the Sarvarthasiddhi, a definitive commentary on the Tattvartha Sutra and Jainendra Vyakarana, the first work on Sanskrit grammar by a Jain monk. Manikyanandi, 6th century, Jain logician, composed the Parikshamaukam, a masterpiece in the Karika style of the classical Naya school. Jinabhadra, 6th 7th century, author of Avasyak Sutra, Jain tenets, Vaisazanavati and Vasesavasyakabasya, commentary on Jain essentials. He is said to have followed Siddhasena and compiled discussion and refutation on various views on Jaina doctrine. Malavadin, 8th century, author of Nyakakra and Devadasaranyakakra, Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which discusses the schools of Indian philosophy. Malavadin was known as a Vedan i.e. a logician and he is said to have defeated Buddhist monks on the issues of philosophy. Haribhadra 8th century, Jain thinker, author, philosopher, satirist and great proponent of Anakantavada and classical yoga, as a soteriological system of meditation in the Jain context. His works include Siddharshana Samakaya, Yogabindu, Yogadursta Samakaya, and Durdakyana. He pioneered the Divatrimshadika genre of writing in Jainism, where various religious subjects were covered in 32 succinct Sanskrit verses. Prabhakandra, 8th 9th century, Jain philosopher, composed a 106 sutra Tattvartha Sutra and exhaustive commentaries on two key works on Jain Naya, Pramayakamalamartanda, based on Manikyanandi's Parikshamukam and Nyayakamudakandra on Akalanka's Lagiyastraya. Abhayadeva, 1057-1135, author of Vadamarnava, Ocean of Discussions, which is a 2,500 verse tika commentary of Sanmartika and a great treatise on logic. Acharya Hemachandra, 1089-1172, Jain thinker, author, historian, grammarian, and logician. His works include Yogasastra and Trishishthashalaka Pureshakaritra and the Siddhahemavyalarana. He also authored an incomplete work on Jain Naya, titled Pramana Mimamsa. 
Vadadeva 11th century, he was a senior contemporary of Hemakhandra and is said to have authored Paramananayatadavalakalankara and its voluminous commentary Syadvadaratnakara that establishes the supremacy of doctrine of Syadvada. Vidyanandi 11th century, Jain philosopher, composed the brilliant commentary on Akarya Yumasvami's Tattvarthasutra, known as Tattvarthashlokavartaka. Yasovajaya (1624–1688), Jain logician and one of the last intellectual giants to contribute to Jain philosophy. He specialized in Navya Naya and wrote VRTTIs commentaries on most of the earlier Jain Naya works by Samantabhadra, Akalanka, Manikyanandi, Vidyanandi, Prabhakandra, and others in the then prevalent Navya Naya style. Yasovajaya has to his credit a prolific literary output, more than 100 books in Sanskrit, Prakrit, Gujarati and Rajasthani. He is also famous for Nyanasara essence of knowledge and Adhyatasara essence of spirituality. Topic See also Jaina seven valued logic Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources Topic Further reading Topic External Links Jane Philosophy Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy